Hello everyone and welcome to Mutual Knowledge. I am Gautier Lamotte, your host, and today my two guests are Andreas Kohl and Alberto De Luigi. Hi guys. Hey Gautier, thanks for having us. So you guys are founders of Sequentia. First of all, can you introduce yourselves, what Sequentia is and how you guys have met, how you decided to create that? Let's dive directly into that. Sure. Uh, well, uh, I start. Uh, you, you, Andres, uh, feel free to jump in <laughs> and interrupt me. Um, so uh, I always worked in the in consultancy company like Accenture for the corporate and so on. But at the same time, I've always been involved in, let's say, the, the Bitcoin world. I have a blog in Italy. It is quite well known since 2015, and uh, always I've always been involved in discussions uh, uh, also when uh, just to, to make an example when uh, Drija and Joseph Poon came to to Milan to discuss uh, lightning for the first time I was there and so on so uh, for the Italian audience for example I translated the first uh, I translated the, the actually written some some guides about lightning networks and so on uh, and then uh, let's say in 2019 I started studying the the concept of asset tokenization and i was looking at um at uh, technologies like side chains i remember that i first uh, looked into the paper of state chains then uh, uh, the strong federation of liquid and other technologies like rgb and so on and uh, i started let's say in, in conceiving uh, the idea of what uh, later became uh, sequentia um i met uh, uh well uh one year later let's say around 2020 uh i i started discussing in public uh, at least for the for an italian audience uh, in uh, broadcast podcast and this kind of transmissions and um, uh, let's say networks uh, the this idea um and uh, i met andreas uh, one year later in 2021 uh through common acquaintance and um let's say we started discussing about the project he was quite enthusiastic and then we also find out that we had uh, so many things in common about let's say uh libertarianism austrian school uh and, and these kind of things uh, uh let's say we we shared the, the same ideals and so on and in 20 mm -hmm. 22 we embarked on this uh, project formally together uh, with uh, opening the company and so on. um yeah and just to 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 provide a very very quick introduction but later andreas with his better english can explain better than me uh, basically um sequentia is a, a solution and is mainly for asset tokenization and exchange of these assets directly with bitcoin btc no no derivatives uh, no pegs and um so it's not although i started studying of course state chains and or or the liquid federation with strong federation papers and so on initially they were all focused on uh, um, as a, they, they basically were uh, uh, solutions for uh, layer two Bitcoin payments, mm. while the focus of Sequentia is not uh, uh, to be a layer two uh, for payments. Uh, I, we we believe that Lightning uh, solves that use case quite well uh, as a trust less solution, while a trusted solution for scalability of Bitcoin payments you can have anything else like custodians banks as well as uh, safe Diana Moose says uh, so we will say tackle the world of uh, financial assets mainly or uh, stable coins uh, although stable coins I think are a sort of temporary solution be before actual um, uh, mass adoption uh, happens uh, with Bitcoin uh, but still they are very common use case nowadays and um, still today we basically the market standard is we require a coin like ether to transfer stable coins we don't want that uh, so that's the first uh, thing that uh, sequential introduces and and we are actually developing uh, so uh, removing the requirement of a of a 
coin or token or anything to uh, transfer assets. Uh, you have basically a free market for transactions fees. So basically you can transfer the asset that is accepted by uh, the block producers in this site. And then you can transfer this for, uh, okay. for that's that's very brief introduction. I'll be very happy to to ask you more questions in details, and also um, I'll be very happy to uh, to ask you to re-explain that uh, for <laughs> some users who are coming not from the technical ba background, uh, technical side of the blockchain industry, uh, but who are interested in the, in the use case because saying that there is no uh, that you can transfer stable coins pegged to a state currency, but without using one specific network such as ethereum uh, is like the no coin approach uh, approach is really quite n innovative so that's quite interesting to uh, to hear about andreas would you like to introduce yourself as well yes sure so uh my name is andreas cole um my name is quite german but i'm actually uh from a pre-international background uh i'm a citizen of france spain and germany uh got a family all over the world but i grew up in the uk um which is uh actually uh where i was when i first learned about bitcoin uh in 2012 i was uh, working my first job ever in london as uh, as a junior accountant um this was around the time that uh that julian assange uh, uh went into the ecuadorian embassy um uh, which uh um you know was something that uh for me you know it, it impacted me quite a bit I, I had been following wikileaks for quite a while and i had seen how they they were being persecuted left and right and uh part of that was a uh, massive uh, financial deplatforming uh getting taken off paypal credit cards deactivated and so on and so at the time you know i, I went to to show support for julian uh outside the ecuadorian embassy and uh uh, that was actually my first exposure to Bitcoin because it was uh, uh, the only way to support him at the time financially. And uh, there were a few people there uh, gathering Bitcoin donations. Um, I camped overnight and uh, and uh, live streamed uh, in front of the embassy. Um, but so that that was how Bitcoin first caught my attention. But uh, um, later on, I I uh, really got more into Bitcoin through uh, a deeper philosophical site. Uh, Alberto mentioned Austrian economics. Uh, um, this was also around the time that uh, that uh, I got into Austrian economics, and um, well, the, it was such a uh, amazing transformation for me uh, you know, as a young adult just uh, entering the, the professional world. Um, I decided to take a risk and uh, leave everything behind uh, my, my accounting job of that to to just learn more about Australian economics and dedicate myself to Bitcoin. So I started my first uh, Bitcoin startup in 2013, uh, which was uh, an attempt to to uh, distribute the first ever Bitcoin compatible point of sale machine. Um, wow. trying to <laughs> trying to sell them to merchants in London obviously way too early back then there was uh, not really any demand but the, that was my first foray into entre entrepreneurship and uh, I, I learned quite a lot um, in the next in the following years uh, I made a living as an OTC trader on local bitcoins uh, I was literally carrying briefcases full of cash uh, to buy and sell Bitcoin uh, around Europe uh, on taking trains um that was uh also probably you know quite uh risky uh but uh i, I had fun and uh i it also allowed me to uh, take a lot of time to study austrian economics and to write uh, uh about austrian economics and that was um um what that was what led me to um to Liechtenstein eventually um i uh, received a, a prize from the, the ruling prince of Liechtenstein for an essay that I wrote about uh, decentralization in general, but partly about monetary de decentralization. During my award ceremony, I, I gave uh, the, the ruling prince of Liechtenstein and uh, several other members of his family their first Bitcoins on, on paper wallets. Um, and then that took me into, um, into doing some consulting in and around Liechtenstein, uh, which was then positioning itself as a very forward thinking jurisdiction um and uh and i helped a few companies get set up there 
Um, I, I, I indirectly got involved with some shit coining, to, to be blunt, uh, some ICOs and stuff like that. Um, but but then, well, after the 2017, 2018 uh, bubble, as a lot of people did, I, I think I uh, narrowed my focus back just uh, on Bitcoin. But, um, but I, I never lost interest in the concept of asset tokenization. That was actually one of the first use cases that, uh, that really appealed to me about Bitcoin that I thought uh, had uh, the most potential. Even back when I, when I first heard about Bitcoin, people were, were already uh, playing around with solutions like uh, colored coins in 2012. Um, then Counterparty in 2014, I was a big supporter of Counterparty. I advised everybody I knew around me uh, not to invest in the Ethereum ICO because I thought that uh, XCP would uh, would be the end all be all solution for for asset tokenization. Obviously, it didn't turn out quite that way because uh, of uh, certain in, intrinsic limitations to the Bitcoin protocol, which uh, are uh, are obviously very deliberate design choices because we want to have a, a very distributed network. So we don't want to pollute the, the Bitcoin uh, blockchain with uh, unnecessary data. Um, but again, you know, I, I learned this uh, through through experience and, uh, and getting, getting burnt a little bit. But I, I never gave up on asset tokenization on Bitcoin because uh, precisely from our background in Austrian economics, um, you know, we, we, we know as uh, uh, written by Hans Hermann Hoppe and, and many other uh, great Austrians, that monetary standards uh, are are not subject to the same kind of competition that uh, let's say private companies are. Um, when when you have uh, a monetary standard, uh, unless you have government intervention enforcing multiple different uh, monetary standards, it uh, it typically is a, a sort of winner take all kind of uh, kind of game, like like communication standards, like other standards, wherever uh, you know uh, human beings are just. Uh, setting up uh, rules for uh, for associating together um typically um, unless uh, you have uh, uh some some violent imposition of different rules uh, uh human beings tend to to like to to uh to come to 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 the same uh, sets of rules so right and and whenever you have many different uh, types of money monies you essentially have uh, s still a system of partial barter which uh, is uh, antithetical to the very purpose of money. Uh, you still have uh, the problem of double coincidences of wants in, in some cases. And, um, and in a purely free market, uh, I believe that uh, um, we, would, we would eventually have uh, one global monetary standard. And, um, and there's every reason to believe today that this standard would be Bitcoin. Um, so obviously, we can, we can get a little bit more into that later, but... Uh, just uh, to go back on, on my path, you know, I, uh, I uh, after after the Liechtenstein episode, um, you know, I, I uh, spent a few years uh, you know, looking for for the next thing, and um, and for me, you know, meeting Alberto and learning about uh, his ideas for Sequentia, uh, you know, it resonated with everything I had learned across my whole entire adult life that uh, I spent uh, working and thinking about Bitcoin. Um, so, so yeah, in the last few years, I, I moved to El Salvador and, uh, and decided to make uh, Bitcoin and, 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 uh, uh, creating financial markets on Bitcoin through Sequentia, uh, my life purpose. I believe we have also been involved in the same project. We have uh, at least, uh, crossed each other's path, uh, at the Liberlan convention, if I remember correctly. Yes, that, that's right. Yes, I was also involved with Liberland uh, uh, around the same time as Liechtenstein. Uh, that's right. I was I was uh, the representative of Liberland and Liechtenstein for some time. Makes sense. All right. So, what is the main problem uh, with the fact that can, can you explain to, uh, to me the problem as if I were a total moron? Maybe I am. I don't know. But let's <laughs> let's imagine uh, you have to vulgarize this to a five year old or maybe to a fifteen year old. Uh, what's the problem with having to rely on Ethereum or some competitive, uh, competitive uh, network in order to transfer stable coins? What's the, the main problem? And um, let's start with that already. Well, I think maybe actually if we take a little step back even before we get to that problem, why, why Ethereum was even necessary? Why uh, do we have multiple layer ones other than... than in Bitcoin, 
I, I briefly touched on, on this and uh, the intrinsic limitations of, of, uh, of Bitcoin. Um, but uh, yes, with, uh, with uh, colored coins back, back in the day in 2012, uh, you know, a lot of people already experimented with tokenization on, on, on Bitcoin and uh, and um, a lot of different things were, were issued on Bitcoin. And even then, back when, um, you know, block space was a lot less scarce, uh, uh, transaction fees were a lot lower, there was uh, a lot uh, less going on in Bitcoin, people already recognized that uh, that you, you wouldn't be able to... Uh, to to do all of these things inside of Bitcoin transactions without significantly uh, um, uh, increasing the block size, and so we had the block size wars later on. But in in the meantime, uh, you know, other layer ones were established, and uh, part of the of the Ethereum narrative uh, was also additionally that uh, they wanted to. Uh, they, they wanted to expand on, on the, the constraints of uh, Bitcoin script, uh, which is uh, intentionally non turing complete. Um, and so that's how the EVM was born. And uh, um, the idea that uh, you, know, you, you, you could have a Turing, com a Turing complete environment where uh, you, you, you would be able to have loops and uh, much more complex behavior. Um, that, uh, um, that came at at the cost of some of the philosophy of uh, Bitcoin, some of the the strong points of Bitcoin, um, partly with uh, with the the, the central the decentralization of Bitcoin. Um, obviously, we see now that uh, that Ethereum is uh, is a very uh, expensive network to to run, um, and that um, uh, obviously, if you want to to run a full node, you're probably better off using. Uh, server services like uh, Amazon w AWS, and yeah. now a lot of people uh, are able to to operate, to, uh, yeah. operate that. It contradicts right, so. the idea of decentralization when when basically uh, a tenth of the nodes are on the on the servers of a centralized company, of course. Right, and 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 um, and more than that, obviously, uh, the the uh, monetary philosophy is different as well uh, in, in terms of. Uh, of uh, how how um, uh, new uh, coins are issued and uh, 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 they've departed from proof of work into uh, proof of stake, which is even further centralizing um, the, the network into a few hands. Um, so now with uh, Ethereum and other similar uh, layer ones, you see that uh, um, decisions are delegated to just a very small segment of, of, of people like uh, uh, key um, key opinion leaders, uh, uh, the founders of Ethereum, a few developers, and uh, and, uh, and big stakers, but um, but really most users of Ethereum don't really have a say. They're not sovereign over the network, and well, even you know, from from like a, a much uh, a, a bigger bigger picture, even if you could. Uh, make a network that was uh, more flexible than than, than Bitcoin, um, while 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 keeping a lot of the the, uh, the good monetary philosophy, the good uh, uh, standards behind Bitcoin. You uh, you still you will still have a completely separate network effect, and um, and Bitcoin with uh, with uh, the, the number of users it has and the, the history it has. Would still have an advantage, um, where even even if there was some some considerable innovation um, before a new network could overtake Bit Bitcoin's network effects, uh, it is very likely that that Bitcoin itself would adapt. So so the the, the very intrinsic properties of Bitcoin as as a distributed uh, network make it uh, 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 as an open source distri distributed network. Make make it very resilient and anti fragile to competition. Mm -hmm. So 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 the idea that that you would uh, have to use a different network for diff for certain use cases is uh, is quite doubtful, especially as uh, as uh, uh, Bitcoin keeps keeps growing and uh, and uh, it already has gone past this this uh, point of uh, of no return. Even more specifically, the Lightning Network also has. Uh, uh, Reached a level of uh, of adoption, um, specifically merchant adoption, 
where it would be very difficult to imagine another uh, uh, another peer-to-peer -peer trustless payment network uh, um, ever really standing a chance at uh, at taking over. So, so just, yeah, just to know. let me try to yeah to to to, to uh, let's say as a very straightforward and uh, maybe in a simpler way. Uh, of course, the, the first thing that you notice when you transfer, uh, let's say, stable coins over Ethereum is that uh, you need uh, Ether. So that's a usability uh, issue. You, first of all, because you need to acquire the coins, and this is not just a usability issue, but uh, somehow it's also a privacy issue because you need to acquire those coins. Some, some, sometimes you might need to go to an exchange just to acquire those coins and to transfer your other asset. Then, uh, of course, uh, uh, if uh, there is uh, one asset or one coin, let's say Bitcoin, that is used mainly as, um, as money, so it has a monetary purpose. Then you introduce a completely different layer that needs uh, a new coin to transfer other assets. So basically, also even, even if you have bitcoins, then you need to exchange them, and so you lose again privacy. You spend money. Uh, use it's a usability uh, issue. And also, if you introduce this new layer, like, for example, Ethereum or any other uh, layer, layer one uh, out there, there are so many, uh, then is this layer capable of actually uh, doing this job for, uh, uh, for the mass, for mass adoption? If there is no solution like Lightning Network, probably not. So basically, what we are trying to do is uh, to stick to Bitcoin as much as we can, also in the infrastructure of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has a Lightning Network, stable coins should add Lightning Network. Bitcoin allows Atomic Swap to exchange peer-to-peer -peer in a decentralized way with uh, Bitcoins itself or other uh, other coins in a, uh, that are in a UTXO system, then also the layer that allows the transfer of assets should have this technology, the atomic swap, or the lightning swap, or the submarine swap, all these kind of things. So making everything more interoperable, to say, to say a buzzword, but probably it is, uh, this can mean a lot of things, but in our case, let's say it's... Uh, exchangeable to to allow a uh, peer-to-peer trade uh also for the uh this side chain or anyway infrastructure that interacts with btc so let's say the the straightforward as well is you lose uh, um uh you lose privacy you lose money fees uh, especially when this uh, system doesn't scale well and especially yeah. in ethereum you lose quite a lot of money these yeah, days exactly. But Ethereum, as, as any other, uh, I mean, if you have success in an infrastructure that doesn't support uh, something like Lightning, in the end, you will pay money. So you can have a very, very fast blockchain, you can have whatever you want, but in the end, if it gets to congestion because it's used, actually used, then the end is the same. So that's the very straightforward answer. Little question. Can you vulgarize, guys, the, what the Lightning Network is for our listeners who... who know the name they know the term but they come from finance and not uh, from traditional business and finance and not necessarily from uh, the field of cryptocurrencies uh, how would you how would you sum up the lighting network sure well um the lightning network is a layer two i would say it's one of uh, it's essentially the only real layer two on, on bitcoin at the moment if you if you define the layer two as a, as a trustless uh, 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 network where you can lock coins under layer one, so you can lock Bitcoin in in, uh, in, in a Bitcoin transaction, let's say, um, and uh, um, and and put that and have access to the sa same amount of uh, Bitcoin or unit denominated in Bitcoin on uh, on a, another network. Um, which, while still keeping access to your private keys, while still uh, being in full self custody of your Bitcoin, um, and being able to exit this uh, this network, this layer two, uh, unilaterally through a layer one transaction. Um, now that 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 that, that means uh, um, 
so, so in 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 why why this helps is because uh, you can then um, on on this off chain network which doesn't use a blockchain which uh, doesn't have uh, some of the same uh, con constraints as, uh, as as a blockchain you can uh, you can keep a separate accounting and then and then at the end when you when you're done with uh, with the layer two with the, the with uh, the off chain transactions when you're when you want to to uh, to settle everything on chain then then this uh, separate accounting takes uh, has has uh, an effect on on the layer one and on how many coins you can uh, take out of that UTXO where where you locked it. Um, so so it's 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 a way to be able to transact your Bitcoin um, uh, off the, the the blockchain without losing access to uh, the custody of, of your coins. Um, let, let me try to make an example, maybe, uh, so that everybody can understand, even if they never uh, never uh, let's say listen or, or heard about. Lightning. So Thank between you. me, Alberto, and Gautier, there is uh, a chan. So basically, our wallet talk each other and decide that we have this uh, way to send uh, each other Bitcoin um, without uh, uh, writing on the blockchain any transaction. But these are actual uh, transactions, actual Bitcoin transactions, because we made a single transaction on chain to open this channel, and then we can do infinite transaction over this channel between me and you. Then Gautier has the same type of technology, the same channel with Andreas. Then I can send Bitcoins directly to Andreas because my Bitcoins basically are sent to Gautier and through Gautier uh, to Andreas and the other way around. Imagine that everybody is connected, the wallet to wallet uh, in the world, and then basically I can send money to everywhere else in the world and receive money from everywhere else. That's basically the idea, rough idea. Of so yeah, we're, we're putting all the transactions, as many transactions as possible, sim similarly offline in order to, to have channels between wallets and not to have that on the main network to to make everything faster, cheaper, and yeah. Yeah, basically they are instant transaction and they are almost zero fee because uh, we don't need to pay miners for those transactions. And yeah, of course, that's uh, the, the, the only is a side effect is basically that we must be online. So the three of us must be online. If Gautier is not online, I need to uh, to uh, channel my payment through another uh, provider or another person that is online. So imagine I have the several channels or maybe a couple of channels with the major uh, node operators that are always online and then I can... Uh, send my money and I don't need to to trust those uh, uh, providers or those intermediates yeah as long as you trust the final recipient so that, that's basically so in order to vulgarize Sequentia you guys are bringing this more marvelous tech to the world of stable coins did, yeah. I, did I sum it up <laughs> easily or, or did I miss something mm -hmm. well I, I, I would say it's a little bit more than that um so obviously, uh, use, being able to use the, the Lightning Network is uh, is a very central part of our thesis, uh, but more so in terms of uh, um, so we're contrasting ourselves with other side chains, right? And uh, um, to go back to the idea of asset tokenization and why people are not doing that on Bitcoin anymore, um, you know, uh, uh, part of. Uh, um, one of the solutions that has been explored in order to to have uh, financial assets, so things other than Bitcoin, other instruments like uh, like shares of companies or or stable coins or commodities or bonds, um, uh, rep represented by tokens uh, and exchangeable for Bitcoin. Um, so one of the way that people have tried to solve that has been through side chains. Um, so new blockchains where uh, you can issue these assets and uh, you, you don't have to pollute the Bitcoin main chain uh, with with, uh, with information about those assets. But but so so far, all of uh, these side chains, um, they it, they have uh, introduced uh, derivatives of Bitcoin. So pegs of Bitcoin. So uh, so in a sense. Like you, 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 there's, you have LBTC on liquid or RBTC on rootstock and so on and so forth. 
in a sense, these side chains, uh, in, in addition to uh, providing a solution for asset tokenization, they're also overlapping with the use, use case of layer twos, with the use case of, of the Lightning Network. Uh, they provide their own alternative to, to Bitcoin payments, which is, uh, which is their, their pegged in Bitcoin on, on these side chains. And uh, the problem with that is that uh, pegged Bitcoins on, on, on a side chain or wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum or, or any other derivative of Bitcoin uh, outside of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of Bitcoin or layer two um, has uh, on one hand counterparty risk. You're trusting someone or a group of people to, uh, to keep Bitcoin locked on the main chain and, and creating this, uh, this representation of Bitcoin somewhere else. Um, and, 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 and that's not, that's, that's in contrast to, to the Lightning Network and Layer 2s because, uh, because you, you don't have this ability to exit that system unilaterally with a Layer 1 transaction. You don't keep, uh, you, you don't keep the self-custody of the Bitcoin that you've locked. You've locked it in someone else's uh, uh, UTXO. Um, and, and, so, and so that's, that's inferior to the Lightning Network is, is, is our claim. Uh, which is why we're trying to be the first sidechain that actually is trying to do less than other sidechains. We're trying to not overlap with the use case of the Lightning Network. Lightning Network is really good uh, for scaling Bitcoin payments. It does its, its job well. Um, and we were trying to be to integrate with that and, and let Lightning payments be used to, to access financial markets, um, the likes of which have been uh, already uh, made on 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 other side chains like uh, like on Liquid, where where you have a, a, uh, already a few security tokens, uh, uh, shares of companies that uh, that uh, can be traded peer to peer, but on Liquid it's it's with this uh, peg Bitcoin, and on Sequentia it will be with Bitcoin on the Lightning Network. Um, so, so that's that's uh, yes. In a sense, we're we're bringing the Lightning Network to to tokenize assets, um, but that's without uh, uh, you know with, without n necessarily um, building anything new in, in on on Lightning. Like Lightning already exists. Lightning it works really well. We're just trying to do a sidechain that that doesn't overlap with it. You know, it's going to be a bit cliche, but I'm going to speak about cuisine about food because you know being french this is a little sure. bit cliche but sometimes times people compare uh, japanese food and french food saying okay french cuisine is by adding layers of complexity whereas japanese uh, style is more about reducing complexity and and subtracting stuff and i have the feeling that you guys are basically avoiding the the pitfall of many many different solutions that happen these days where everyone wants to add layers and layers and layers of complexity so that makes a theoretically great system but in practice it's unusable so i i kind of like what you guys are doing here so yeah interoperability and, and so on and so then i have a question that comes to my mind um how hard is it for you guys to work with the um the the primitive elegance of bitcoin i i you know i think bitcoin is kind of like the old cars you see in every in every country there is one brand of car that is immortal that you you just have to hit it twice with a hammer and you, you can repair it and that's probably not going to be the only car on the road but in 80 years you're still going to see some of them because they are immortal because they are very simple and that's that's their strength but that's also sometimes their weakness. And so Bitcoin is is one of the safest and uh, of the greatest payment means in, in the field of cryptocurrencies. But the tech is quite um, quite old and, uh, and a bit simple. And sometimes some people, for example, find it very hard to program smart contracts or to develop programming languages for Bitcoin. How how do you feel about that yourself, yourselves uh, when you are working with this tech, which has the advantage of being very simple and and strong, so not useless complexity, but which has also the um, the inconvenience uh, um, of uh, being. Uh, yeah, th th there's an inconvenience here, which is that you have to, to work around uh, things that that were too simple for uh, for uh, the modern era of, of cryptocurrency. Well, the the infrastructure that we are uh, using, let's say the, the the code base we are working on, uh, is the one of. The, the, is the, the elements mm -hmm. one of 
Blockstream uh, liquid, basically. Um, so yeah, it's very, very close to Bitcoin. Basically, has uh, some let's say improvement, like it already supports tokenization. Uh, it has uh, all the improvements that Bitcoin had uh, over the, the years. Uh, Schnorr, signature aggregation, Taproot, whatever. Um, and um, uh, but adds also something like simplicity or this kind of things. And we are we want to keep, uh, let's say, compatibility with everything that will come next on elements. So uh, we we whenever there are there are innovation in the field, we want to inherit them from elements. So we want to also keep the code that we create as most uh, compatible as possible with the. Um, basically, we are a fork of, of uh, um, or as we could think of a, a sort of upgrade of, of liquid. And I wouldn't say, I mean, Bitcoin is on purpose uh, uh, limited somehow, mm -hmm. but that's uh, that's uh, the, exactly the the what we want. I mean, we we want a very um, a stable solution that does already everything that we need. Um, there is, as I said, there is tokenization. There is already on a, on on elements uh, the possibility to have uh, um, stable coins that um, are uh, uh, transferred through Lightning. See, Lightning was already built for for Liquid, so we inherit a lot of stuff, and we basically didn't find anything that we cannot do uh, yet that we want to. Uh, with the, this code base. So, yeah, th there are so many com complex layers that introduce uh, many things. Like uh, one example is programmable pools, for example, is one thing that we might want to do in the future. Uh, and yeah, basically we can, uh, I, I wouldn't say we copy paste, uh, but the fact that uh, these kind of technologies have been already developed for other, uh, other uh, blockchains, Basically, we 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 won't expect that uh, it will be difficult to uh, also let's say uh, ad adjust them for the code base that we have. So at the moment, I can I would say we don't find any particular constraint uh, with dealing with such a code base. Okay, so for a very specialized use case, you guys. Uh, actually benefit from the simplicity of Bitcoin and uh, elements and uh, all, all the great products, that, um, all the great technologies that were built on top of that, you guys benefit from it more than it costs you at the time. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, uh, Alberto, you might uh, want to say something about the, the limitations of uh, Bitcoin script compared to trying a complete approach. Is, is that really as, as, uh, as big of a limitation as uh, some people think it is? Well, that's, uh, yeah, if you read actually the, probably the first paper, I don't remember if it was the, the yellow one or the white paper from, from Vitalik uh, Buterin as well, uh, um, you, you can read that uh, uh, most of the use cases that uh, they talked for Ethereum could have actually been um, developed also with, uh, uh, with non-Turing complete uh, uh, scripting system. So actually, uh, we, we really don't, don't find anything at the moment that we, uh, we, we might think of it's worth develop for and that actually needs a Turing completeness, which also on, on the other end uh, requires uh, a more space, especially, so less efficient transactions and might also be a risk for users and developers because of it's over complicated uh, uh, i mean it's not over complicated it's slightly at least complicated um, uh, uh, yeah. auditing smart contracts is a massive industry uh, in ethereum precisely for this reason because uh, of uh, all the complexity and open-endedness uh, of uh, solidity of uh, the train completeness uh, in general um, and even with all of that uh, uh, auditing you still have zero day exploits and you still have uh, uh, m massive uh, uh, massive draining of funds that happens occasionally despite uh, despite a lot of great minds going through these contracts and uh, I think that that just illustrates uh, the, our point that uh, 
if a use case can be done uh, with Bitcoin script or another non turing complete uh, an environment, um, then it, it even if it costs a few more hours from developers, it uh, definitely is worth do doing so. Uh, even if it takes a little bit more creativity and uh, thinking from the devs, because uh, ultimately that uh, that might save a lot of people a lot more uh, money. Anyway, a blockchain is not a computer in general, so it's okay that you can't uh, program anything you have in mind in a blockchain. There are solutions, layer two solutions for that, just in case. Oh, tell me about it. We, we at Moon have developed the Glow language and basically we decided not to be able to, uh, uh, to program everything and to have a, program that, that, uh, have a programming language that does only one thing. And because it does only one thing, that's why everything is so simple with it and so, so much easier. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I learned quite a lot today. Any last word about your wonderful project? Um, well, you know, just uh, to say a little bit about our development roadmap, uh, as Alberto said, we we are uh, building this on Elements, which is itself a fork of Bitcoin. Um, we are trying to keep as much as, uh, uh, as possible that we do modular so that uh, uh, the Blockstream team might uh, be able to, to uh, merge some things upstream uh, later on. One, the first feature that we're working on is uh, this no coin feature, the uh, uh, ability to, to, uh, to pay transaction fees with any assets issued on the sidechain. Um, we, we believe we're pre, coming pretty close to, to getting a proof of concept for that in, in the next couple of months. Um, and at that point, uh, just to, to keep using the example of, um, of uh, Blockstream merging things upstream, um, if they decide to, to do that, then the Liquid Network uh, would be able to support several um, uh, pe pegged in uh, pe two-way pegs for Bitcoin um, instead of, uh, of, of one being favored by the network like LBTC is uh, right now. Um, so that that could be interesting for them to experiment uh, with uh, like maybe fediments and uh, another uh, federated pegs uh, um, and and give them an, an equal ground to stand on. Um, obviously, that's not really our our long term goal, but it is a, a cool thing that we're coming up with very soon. Um, we we should have a, a public test net uh, that everyone will be able to connect to with that feature uh, once it's done. And then we'll move on to, to the next feature, which is uh, what will really allow the interoperability with, with Bitcoin. It's a consensus rule called anchoring. And uh, uh, obviously, we're running out of time a little bit, but you can uh, read more about that on our white paper. Uh, and uh, it's very early still to say, but we're hoping to, to have that, uh, that next feature done uh, more or less by the end of this year uh, or early next year, which, uh, which should be when we, we see an initial launch of uh, of uh, uh, of the main net of uh, the sequential network, um, so so yeah, that's that's what's uh, what you have to look forward to. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, we're always looking for all sorts of support. We're really just a, a new nascent project, really. And even though the idea has been around for a long time, uh, development has really just gotten started. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, that's that's about it for for now. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Andreas, and thank you, Alberto, everyone. This was Mutual Knowledge. You were listening to the founders of the Sequentia project. Look it up. That sounds very, very promising, and I'm personally very exciting to see, excited to see that. Follow them on their social media, and don't forget to follow us as well. Cheers, everyone.